Hi guys, Tiffany here and welcome to my quilting live. It is Christmas Day! Yay! So Merry Christmas to all of you and your families too. So today's video is me making enchiladas. It is unlike any other video I have made or will ever make because I probably will never do any more cooking videos. But I wanted to show you guys a Christmas tradition. We do different things every Christmas, and this year is enchiladas. And everybody goes cuckoo wacky crazy for enchiladas. And I make them a lot differently than everybody else. First off, I want to warn you, in the background there will be sound throughout the video. Because it's Christmas Day and we do just what we do every year. Everybody lounges around, watches Christmas movies, and has fun. While I will be here in the kitchen making food. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hi. So, to make enchiladas, this is what we're going to need. And I'm going to let you know in advance that none of these products are sponsoring me. I'm just showing you the ingredients that you will need. So, first of all, to make enchiladas, I am making for a lot of people, so you will see that I have a lot of ingredients. First, tortillas. I use white tortillas, and I always buy like 8 or 10 inch. I think these are... Oh, I can't even tell you. They're 10 inch. Okay. So we buy the big ones, not the little ones. This, what I make requires the big tortillas. So I'm making for a lot of people a lot of tortillas. Secondly, what you are going to need is Spanish rice. I'm making for a lot of people. You can make your own Spanish rice if you know how. I'm making for a lot of people, so I need a lot of we're, Spanish rice. We're doing it quick and easy. Next, refried beans. Again, you can downsize for smaller amounts of people. One small can will get you four people's worth, four uh, servings of the needed part for the refried beans. So I'm using a big, huge can for lots of people. Thirdly, red sauce. Mild for me. So if you don't like spicy food or you can't handle it because you have issues like I do with GERD, mild. If you want spicy, up the dose. <laughs> or put hot sauce on your food. So that's red sauce. Only one can, though, because I don't use as much red as green. Green sauce. Again, mild, because I can't have spicy. And nobody else around here really likes spicy food. So it works. So I got two cans of green sauce, because I use a lot of green sauce. Next, olives. Oh, yeah. If you don't like olives, don't use them. We like olives. So I got two cans of olives. We're going to use them. Thirdly, cheese. You need a lot of shredded cheese. You can shred your own. I use the shredded cheese blended kind. So it is Mexican uh, style blended. Shred, yeah, it's Mexican style blended. It's shredded mozzarella jack, mild cheddar, and quesadilla flavored cheeses. So I use lots of cheese. So if you want to buy a big huge bag, buy a big huge bag. Next, you are going to need chicken. I'm using chicken, chicken breast, buy the bag. We just buy the frozen bags. And we're going to use two bags. And I'm using two bags sweater. because I'm making a lot. But if you want, you can also use your leftover turkey that you have shredded apart and put away and didn't know what to make with. Use turkey. Turkey enchiladas are just as good. Or you can use ground beef, ground turkey, ground whatever you want, as long as you have a meat source in it. So, yeah. And then you are going to need pans, pots. Um, you will need uh, something to roll in. This is how I roll, and you guys will see further in the video, as well as just pans that are big kind, though, because big pans. big pans, because you're going to be rolling, and you will see further as this video goes how I do this, you guys. This is amazing. So some big, deep pans, because these are almost like burritos, but trust me, they are enchiladas, and they are the bomb. So... Let's get to it. You will be watching this video, mostly everything that I do in time lapse, but as I show you how I'm doing something, we will slow the video down and show you how it goes. So, thank you. For the chicken, big pot, guys. Big pot. We're going to start with taking the chicken, and mine just so happens to be not cooked, not defrosted all the way. We're going to chop them in half. Why? Because they boil easier. So just take your chicken, 
chop it in half. And if you want, if the pieces are too big, you chop them in half again because it makes it a little bit easier to boil. So just chop up all your chicken. You can chop it in threes, whatever, as long as it can boil. Because we're going to be boiling it. Today, the camera person is sort of Scott and anybody else that wants to help me. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Can you doing... do the other bag of chicken? Though? Yes. So I'm doing two bags, which is, I don't even know how many breasts I just cut up so far, but you... Well, it's six pounds of chicken. So I'm doing 12 pounds of chicken. No, six pounds total. Oh, six pounds total of chicken. Okay. And three pounds each bag, honey. Okay, so again, chicken breast is what I'm using, and if it's too much and you don't want it to be whatever, just cut it in half again. Twelve pounds we'd be feeding an arm. And most of the time, I chop off all this fat. If there's a lot of fat, chop it off. I chop off a lot of fat because it makes it easier when you're shredding. Okay. I also chop it differently than everyone else. And it's okay if it's still frozen because you're going to be boiling it as, lo as, as long as you're not defrosting it in hot water. Defrost it in cold water. For those that are new to cooking and you come across this video. Oh, that was a hard one there. Yeah, that's awesome. pot with water to boil your chicken or cook your meat any other way that you cook your meat. All right, guys, so next is just keeping this cooking chip, the chicken cooking until it turns white. You guys should know when your chicken is done, <laughs> as well as the Spanish rice is cooking, and stir when needed, as well as the beans. And I hope you saw in Fast Forward, I added milk, a little bit of milk, some cheese, and some green sauce, stirred it up, as well as the directions for the rice. Just follow the directions on any of your packaging, whatever you buy, or if you're making your own, you know how to do it. So just let that cook and we'll be back with the next part. So while I wait for, you know, the chicken to boil and everything and all the ingredients that are needed to cook, I would like to know in the comments below, what is one of your favorite family traditions. What do you do for Christmas? What do you like to eat for Christmas? What does your family do to celebrate? Do, does everyone come to your house? Do you go to someone else's house? How do you celebrate your Christmas? Tell me in the comments below. I want to hear all about your Christmas.
just for people who don't know, and this is their first time maybe boiling chicken, I just wanted to add, to know when your chicken is done, it'll look really messy in the pot, it always does, there's no way around that. But to know that it's done is if you can take a piece of chicken, like this one, say, and you can hold it against the wall of your pot, and your soft spoon can cut it in half. So if you can cut your chicken in half, like this, with a soft spoon, and it just falls apart, then it is almost or is done. Some of these look like they need a minute, but if you can cut it with the spoon, a really soft spoon, that means your chicken is ready. So go ahead and pull it out and get to the next step. Okay, so we are going to add another thing to our meal because there's lots of people coming. So I'm going to be doing my famous, you know, it's famous in my family, everybody loves fried potatoes. So I am also going to be chopping up some potatoes and I'll show you how I fry them and make a really good fried potato. So stick around and let's do some fried potatoes too. potatoes, obviously we fry in vegetable oil, so make sure you have some vegetables. You do not need a lot. Be very sparing with it because then they'll just end up too greasy. Next what I do is make sure that I have a spoon. I'm going to add salt, and I have like 10, 9 or 8 potatoes here, something like that. Onion powder, and I kind of go a little crazy with this stuff. It's eight potatoes. So I put onion powder. You can put onion and garlic in instead, but we just don't chop all that stuff. It's too much extra. So we just use onion powder, garlic powder, and I'm not sparing with it. I literally douse it because I'm not using the real thing. And then I have my special ingredient that I buy. It's called spike. You guys will never find this stuff. It's really hard to find. Gotta tap it a little, kind of sticks to itself. But it is an all purpose seasoning and I love it. You can buy it at Walmart online. Our Walmart does not sell it in the store, you have to buy it online. But it's very hard to find it. Every store stops selling it every every time. So then I put in oregano. And I don't use measuring cups or anything, I just kind of cover the potatoes up. Black pepper. And then you season these to your liking. And then Italian seasoning. Again, some of these seasonings are optional if you don't want them in yours. And then once I get all the things I need in, I take my spoon and I stir them up so that every potato gets covered in all of the spices and the oil. Because they kind of need oil on them for the spices to stick better. And I just stir it all up, like so. And it spreads it around. And see, there's, if you look in the pan, there's not a lot of oil. It's just a little amount of oil. And it coats everything just right. And then in about 15-ish, 20 minutes, at the most, they will be done. So I just put a lid on this, and I stir them about every 15 minutes or so. Every 15 minutes. Every 5 minutes or so. I don't know why I said 15. And I just turn the stove up at first, and then I'll turn it down as I go when they start feeling soft. And when they are a little bit on the softer side, like a fried potato should be, then that's when they're done. So I will be back, and we will show you some more stuff. Next we do, we take the boiled chicken and you strain it in a sink or wherever. You just pour it in. No, I don't keep the broth. I don't keep the broth. You can keep your own broth if you want, but we don't keep the broth. I strain it all the way. And I will be back to show you. Oh, what we do is we're going to rinse the pot out. 
Okay. I, I was going to be back for it, but I'll just show you now. We'll just rinse the pot out. And I'm not doing this part because all this stuff is heavy. So we just rinse the pot out because I'm going to be using it for the next step. This is the easy part. Just pour the chicken into the pot. This can go in the trash. Okay, no. we well, want the chicken down here. Yes, I want all the chicken. Top, the top, the top, the top. The top, the top. I know, I'm going to be dying here. Ma, can you bring me the lid over there to this pan? Somewhere over there. Where does it go? Where's the lid to that pan? Right here, right here. Oh, right here. okay. I need a uh, pause for a second. Okay, so cake blender. This is how I shred my chicken. So first off, while the chicken is nice and hot, I actually pour seasonings into it. I don't put a whole lot, not a whole lot, just a good amount to like, you know, blend with it. Cause once it shreds, it shreds with it. So I just using garlic, some uh, Italian seasoning, some onion powder, pepper, and salt. That's pretty much all I'm seasoning it with. And I think this is out now. Do we need more of something? Onion powder. Do we need it now? We no, it. I do not need it now. We have it. I'm good. We do. Okay. And then some salt and pepper. And then we're going to take that open green sauce that we used on the, um, the fried, um, refried beans. And I'm going to pour a little bit in here. About, I don't know. At least a cup amount, yeah, amount of a there. cup's worth. We don't want it. We'll use it in the then I'm going to take my blender and not spill anything and not fall over. And I'm going to stick it down in here. And I'm going to use my lid, but at first I'll stick it down in here real quick to move my chicken around. And I'm going to put it on low. It's going to start flying everywhere. So I usually use my lid to keep it from flying. But you just move it around in there with the blender, like this, and it's loud in my pot, but this is my good pot for being able to blend, and all the chicken will yeah. shred. And you can turn it as you go, just like you're making a cake, it's really loud, and then you can turn it on high, get all the chicken. And the reason why we cut it in half, it, the chicken, is because it shreds easier also, even after boiling. So it fits through the, the cake mixer, um, the trough. And it's just shredding until every big piece is shredded. So look at that. You can see, I just shred until there's no more big pieces left. And it works really well. We remove all the chicken off of here because we want that. We want as much chicken as possible. And I have clean hands. Make sure you keep your hands clean the whole time messing with meats because we're going to be making a disaster here in a minute. All right. So you look through. It's hot right now. And I don't see any more big clumps. I don't feel any big clumps. It's good. It's all shredded. All right. So on to the next part. Don't forget to stir your potatoes in the midst of all the other things that we're doing. Stir them up and turn them down. I've already turned them down. So, And then also, because I don't have nonstick, they used to be nonstick, but they're not, I put some oil, used a paper towel, wiped it all over the pan, and then put some flour and tapped the flour around. Purposely to keep from everything sticking because these do get sticky. So that's the next step. I'll be back with the rest. Okay, this is the process that takes a, a minute, and it also is messy. So wash your hands, which I have already done. Take your flat, whatever, kind of, it has to have some kind of dip in it, like a serving tray, to make these on, because this is what keeps it from getting too messy. We're going to start with red sauce. Mom, can you open a package of tortillas? Oh, I forgot that. And I'm going to pour the red sauce onto this tray. 
And not a lot at first, just enough. And everything needs to be next to you. This is a very, very, very messy process. We got cheese, the olives, green, red, chicken, uh, refried beans, and the rice, and the Spanish rice. So you're going to take a tortilla, and you're going to put it on this tray, and you are going to soak the tortilla in it, like so. While it's here, you're going to start with refried beans because they are the softest. So I put them on the bottom first. So you just put a little bit of refried beans, make it across the bottom, like so. Then you take some rice. And our rice has been sitting too long. <laughs> but you're going to use your fingers if you have to. That's why I said wash your hands. And you're going to put some rice. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, that's hot. In there too. Just like that. Let's put a little bit more. There we go. Then you're going to take a shredded chicken. Grab a handful and lay it out. And again, there's going to be some chunks because that's just how it happens. But you put some shredded chicken in. Then you take your green sauce and you pour a little bit of green sauce in there. It makes a big mess. Trust me, this is the messiest, messiest meal. Take some olives. I don't want to put too many in every single one because then we'll run out quick. Then you take your cheese and you fill it with cheese like this. Then, after you're done making a mess, you take the sides. Oh, don't forget to do your potatoes too. Take your sides of your tortilla, roll them in, and then roll it like a burrito, just like this. And it's going to be soggy at first. Then you drain the red sauce, lay it into the pan, like that. So then you start all over. Grab another tortilla. You might want to take those out of the package and we'll just lay them on top of them. Take another tortilla. Start with the bean. So you take your bean, put it on the bottom, like this. Remember, I put milk, green sauce, and cheese into my bean so that it's nice and thin. I like it on the thinner side. So you put your rice in here. Ours kind of clumped, but doing a bazillion things at once. Put your rice. Put your chicken. Just like this. Put your green sauce. Spread it out in there. Grab your olives. Put your olives in. And grab your cheese. You should have just poured it into a bowl. It'd probably be easier if you pour your cheese into a bowl. But... I'm doing it the hard way, I guess. You take your sides, you lift them up, and roll it like a burrito. Like so. Make sure your sides stay up. Then you place it in the pan. Like so. And you just keep repeating the process over and over and over again. So put that down. Grab some bean. You don't need a lot because that's why I said we're using the big tortillas for this. Grab your rice. She's going to need some cheese. Grab your chicken. Fill it or whatever in, insert you're putting in. If you're doing beef or turkey or whatever. Grab your green sauce, pour it in, and it's very messy. This is the messiest, messiest, messiest. Grab some olives, grab your cheese, and then roll it like a burrito, and then stick it in the pan. So from here on out, we're just going to put this in fast forward.
So after you roll a ton, and I'm totally not done here, guys. After you roll a bunch, and it's in the pan, and you're ready, what you need to do is add a little bit of red sauce. And I'm going to use my hands in a second. Put some more red sauce on the top of everything. I don't want to use all of it because I still need it. And I'm going to smear it. Smear it. Make sure everything's nice and wet. And then I'm going to take my green sauce and do the same thing. Just throw it on top. And also you need to preheat your oven to 400. While this is happening, preheat your oven to 400. Smear all this on. It's nice and spread around. And yes, I use my hands for everything. If you don't want to get your hands dirty or you have cuts on your fingers, this stuff does burn if you do. <laughs> then use uh, some kind of a spatula or something. Or whatever. Now, cheese. Don't be sparing. Have fun with the cheese. Put cheese all over the whole thing. Cheese it up. Cheese it up. We're going to need another one. I'm going to have to be sparing only because we are going to run out. <laughs> Is that the last one? Yeah. And I will be sparing. All right, so once you go cheese all over everything. Don't you have cheese on everything? I only need just a little bit because I'm going to run out. Can I dump it in the bowl? No, just let me have it. Cheese the tops. like this. Still some from the other one. I don't want to run out. All right. Once it's all on there and you got it all cheesed up, we are going to stick this in the oven. You don't even need to cover it. Just stick it in the oven for 15 to 18 minutes for the cheese or until your cheese is 100% melted on the top and or starts getting, if you want it a little on the more, I guess, crispier side, let your cheese get a little brown. So the only other thing I do is I add a couple olives to the top of the whole entire thing so everybody gets enough olives with every bite. You don't have to add a ton because we're going to run out of everything, but sometimes I just don't buy enough. <laughs> so I just add a couple more olives to the top. And again, you can do olive free for people who don't like them, but everybody here loves it, so we're not sparing with any of it. All right. And that's how that goes. Stick it in the oven again, 15 to 18 minutes, or until you've got some browning or fully melted cheese if you want it on the softer side. And then we'll be back with the final, let's eat it! Lexa and Jaden. Yeah, if you want, just press pause. Damon and Gabs. Merry Christmas. Max and Mason. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Mom and John. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And we got CJ and Justin. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas from the Groff House. Bye, guys. Lovely. And the final result, yummy enchilada, some fried potatoes. We're going to cut this open. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's look inside there. All sorts of cheesiness. We're going to cut the end off here. And let me tell you guys. I do it quite often, though, cutting my fingers open. Oh. Mm -hmm. Give me a second to chew. Oh. And I'll tell you. The mixture of olives mm -hmm. is amazing. Try it yourself. Thank you guys for watching. Merry Christmas. Bye.